Hello. Hello. I'm looking for Jimmy Dennis. Is he here? Yes, he is. Come in. May I tell Jimmy who's calling? You know, he's always stayed open late on Friday nights. What's the idea of him locking the door at 7 tonight? Well, I talked him into it. Such a lovely summer evening, I thought we might take a drive before it got too dark. Yeah. Now, may I tell Jimmy who's calling? Sure. My name's Gansey. He knows me. Well, you make yourself at home, Mr. Gansey. Jimmy will be right in. Sure. Life in the underworld is always a gamble. That someone should put an end to the questionable career of Napoleon Gansey was not surprising. But that Jimmy Dennis should be arrested and accused of the crime was a shattering disappointment. I knew that Lieutenant Weston would share my concern. You and I put in considerable time and effort helping Jimmy Dennis and happy masters become responsible citizens. We went to the parole board, got them both jobs, and I hope they'd make it. Did we guess wrong? I know, Herb. This business took the wind out of my sails, too. What's the whole story? Well, I didn't make the arrest, but I checked on the evidence, and it's all bad. Gansey was murdered in Jimmy's shop while Jimmy was supposedly down at the South Pole measuring the ice cap. Just exactly how much of that is exaggeration, huh? Well, believe me, his alibi wasn't much better, Herb. Jimmy claims he was making a delivery to a house that wasn't there, to a little man who didn't live there, no witnesses. I can't believe that. I just can't believe that Jimmy would let us and himself down. Herb, he might have had provocation. I know any number of people would love to have taken a shot at Gansey. I can't accept that. Let's have a talk with him. Okay. That I can arrange for you. Yeah, I worked with Gans in the old days. He was a cheap crook with expensive ideas. We helped you before, Jimmy, and if you're innocent, we'll help you again. Well, we've got to have the story straight, Jimmy. Yeah, sure. Well, Gansy dropped into my store four weeks ago, Friday night. Said he'd moved into town to take over the rackets. Wanted me to join up. What'd you say? I told him to get lost. Then what? Well, he'd drop around every Friday night at 7 o'clock, you know, putting on the pressure. And that didn't work, he threatened to get tough. Did he get tough? Well, he didn't get up a chance. I got tough first. What do you mean by that? Well, I told him his type went out with high button shoes. If he didn't stay away from me, I'd drop something on him. And? He just laughed. Told me he'd be back the next Friday to think it over in the meantime. And last night was Friday night? That's it. I got a call about a quarter to seven to deliver some party favors. So I shut up the shop and took off. Anyway, when I get to the address, it's a vacant lot. So I come back to the shop. When I get back here, the door's locked, but when I get inside, there's Gansey dead. So I call the cops, that's that. The voice that called you on the phone, was it a man or a woman? Woman. Okay, Jimmy, we'll see what we can work out. Yeah, Jimmy, stick around. Where would I go? In my opinion, the contract in question is not equitable. I'm 
must be drastic concessions on the part of... On the part of? Casey, did you ever hear of a perfect frame-up? Well, one time or another, almost every married man has declared he was framed. Thanks for the warning. Oh, you'll be a candidate yourself someday. Not if I can help it. You can't. That's why they call it a frame-up. Casey, how many times do I have to tell you that I am a happily unmarried man? I know, but I'm working on it. And I'll get you subpoenaed by some girl yet. Thanks a lot. Now, can we go back to our original subject? Please do. Ever since I've been able to tell the difference between a plaintiff and a defendant, I've been able to sense a frame up from here to Timbuktu and back by way of the Gulf Stream. So? So I know Jimmy Dennis was framed. I know it as well as I know my own name, but I can't prove it. For two weeks now, I've been trying to get a lead in this case. How about Jimmy and Gansey's former associates? Oh, well, that's a good point, Casey. Gansey could have been pressuring a lot of people. Jimmy was the fall guy. But the police have checked every angle. Yes? Just a minute. Mr. Happy Masters to see you? Happy Masters? Send him in. Send Mr. Masters in, please. Happy is Jimmy's best friend. I've been trying to find him. Everybody relax. Little old Happy Masters has just entered the room. He closed the door, then he stepped over across the floor to a large desk where a man is seated. He spoke to the man and he said, I remember you. A lot of people have had the pleasure of putting me in jail. But I know you are the only man I know that ever helped me to get Don't keep little Red Riding Hood waiting, Grandma. I got important business with the gentleman who works here. It's all right, Casey. He won't bite. He certainly barks. <laughs> she adores me. Maybe love has crept into my life at last. Glad to see you, Happy. Uh -huh. Sit down. <clears throat> Mr. Morris, you know about Jimmy. Yeah, why? I think he was praying. What makes you think so? I haven't got the whole story, but I can give you part of the first chapter. I'm listening. Well, when you and Lieutenant Weston gave us a boost in the right direction, Jimmy and me swore on every page of the Bible would never kick the door down again. Well, that's fine, but it'll never hold up in court. Then, on the night of the murder, I'm on my way to Jimmy. It's a nice night, and I'm enjoying the walk. That won't hold up in court either. <laughs> well, how about this? Three blocks from the gift shop, I see Kurt Barron and his girlfriend, Janet Florence, coming around the corner on the double. Go on. Then they get in the car and drive out like there was three squad cars on their tail. Did you get the license number? No, they moved too fast. What'd you do then? Well, Mr. Morris, I'm a devout coward. I'm married now, and we're almost ready to help the population explode. I didn't want anybody on my street to know I was an ex-con. So what'd you do, Happy? Well, I got out of there as fast as I could. If there'd been any trouble, and if I was picked up with my record, you know how it is. So you figure that Kurt Barron and Janet Florence killed Gansey and framed Jimmy? How else could it work? Gansey puts on the pressure, and the Barron scares. But Barron's been operating within the law lately. Why should he scare? Maybe Gansey remembers something he shouldn't. Mr. Morris, I'd bet my life against a broken shoelace that Jimmy wouldn't go back on his word to you and Lieutenant Weston. Are you willing to go to Lieutenant Weston with this story? If you say so, you bet. Happy, I've got some checking up to do. I won't call on you unless I have to. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Morris. I'll sleep a lot better tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Happy. <laughs> Lieutenant Weston, please. Weston. Lieutenant, this is Herb Maris. Yes, sir. Did you know that Kurt Barron was seen in the neighborhood of Jimmy's store on the night of the murder? No, I didn't, but I'll check out and call you back. Okay, thanks. That happy character is one of those lads you'd like to take home and drown in the bathtub. Now, don't be too harsh on him. He might turn out to have the wings of an angel. Huh. 
That I would love to see. You might. Case, do you remember a fellow by the name of Kurt Barron? Racketeer gone straight, if my memory serves me. It does. Happy saw Kurt in the neighborhood of Jimmy's store the night of the murder. Does that make a case against Barron? No, but at least it's a lead, something we haven't had so far. But we'll have to have more than Happy's story. With him being a former criminal, an ex-convict, and friend of Jimmy's, the prosecuting attorney would tear his testimony to shreds. It's your private phone. Hello. Herb, Weston. I checked on Kurt Barron. He's been living in the city for the past two years. He's been quiet and kept out of trouble. On the night of the murder, he was out of the city on his honeymoon. I see. Thanks, Lieutenant. Well, Casey, there goes our lead. We're right back where we came in. One thing was certain. Either Happy Masters or Kurt Barron was lying. Happy came to me of his own free will. He had everything to lose and nothing to gain. So the next obvious step was to check Barron's alibi. There is a copy of Kurt Barron's statement. I might as well tell you, I've read it, and his alibi is perfect. Now, the only person who can prove otherwise is Janet Florence. She's now legally Mrs. Kurt Barron. Thanks, Lieutenant. I'll speak to my congressman about making you a captain. You know, Herb, if I keep sticking my neck out for you in these cases, somebody's going to make me a sergeant. Now, don't worry. You lose a few pounds, you look fine in a uniform. Thanks. I'll call you if there's any news. Well, I can hardly wait. I've marked Marysville and Framingham on the map. Good for you. Now, let's see. Baron and Janet Florence were married in Marysville at 10 o'clock in the morning. And according to his statement, they drove to a hotel in Framingham and registered there. At this point, they were 100 miles from Jimmy's shop. And the hotel employees testified Baron didn't leave the hotel that night. 100 miles away makes a strong alibi. Well, let's look at it this way. Suppose, suppose they had their cocktails in the hotel room at 4 o'clock, as indicated here. They could have left the hotel without being seen and been at Jimmy's a little before 7. Then they get back to the hotel around 9 o'clock, call room service, and have their dinner in their room, and the hotel employees testified that Baron doesn't leave the hotel all night. Besides that, Baron's a perennial bachelor. Why the sudden marriage, unless... Unless he needed a good alibi. And unless he wanted to be sure that she couldn't testify against him. And there's something else. What? Wasn't Baron married before? I don't know. Casey, look, you're going to contact all vital statistic departments, all newspapers and police records in this state and beyond, if necessary, until we find out everything there is to find out about Kurt Barron and Janet Florence. Yes, sir. Police records show that Barron has had no arrest in the past two years. And the year before that, he was arrested 12 times. Well, I don't care how often he was arrested. How often has he been married? Once, to Janet Florence. That's a big help. Excuse me. Yes? Yes, thank you. News item. Janet Florence was married before, six years ago, to a man by the name of Ethan Collins. Any record of a divorce? No. Casey, you are wonderful. See if you can get Kurt Barron's telephone number. I'm going to have a little chat with Mrs. Ethan Collins. Right. This straight. They're having transmission trouble, right? Right. I gathered Baron won't be home for quite a while, but I hope to be out of here before he arrives. But if he should come back with this car in the driveway, you ought to be able to stall him. Supposing he doesn't want to be stalled. Casey, I count on you to use that remarkable ingenuity of yours. I hope I don't disappoint you, Mr. Harris. Oh, hello. 
I was almost asleep. I'm sorry to disturb you. That's quite all right. You're Mr. Maris? That's right. After you phoned, I told myself I should go in the house and change. But I guess I was just too lazy. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. You have an attractive place here. Thank you. Come over and sit down. Oh, not over there. Take this one. Next to me. Thank you. Now, over the phone you said something about an affidavit. That's right. I'm defending a man charged with murder, Jimmy Dennis. And I'm looking for some character witnesses. I don't know Jimmy Dennis. No, but I'm sure your husband does. I thought I'd leave the affidavit here and he could look it over later. Uh, did I say or do something wrong? No. So far, you've done everything exactly right. In fact, uh, you're rather interesting. From what standpoint? From a female standpoint. You know, I always thought that lawyers who delivered subpoenas or affidavits were uh, gruesome people. And in that category, I do not fit. Well, let me put it this way. You could be the man most likely to succeed with a subpoena or an affidavit. Mrs. Barron. My name is Janet. Tell me, Janet. Does Kurt Barron know his wife is a bigamist? Or can you prove you were ever divorced from Ethan Collins? In this country, Mrs. Barron, or should I say Mrs. Collins, a woman must shed one husband before taking on another. If she doesn't, her marriage to number two is automatically annulled. And in case of emergency, she can be forced to testify against her second husband, providing, of course, he's committed some crime. I never heard of Ethan Collins. Then all I can say is you shouldn't go around marrying people you've never heard of. Like I said, I never heard of Ethan Collins. Now get out. Kurt Barron is going to be very cross when he hears that you tried to blackmail me. The question is, who is going to be the prime target of his anger? You or me? Especially since he doesn't know that you're not legally his wife. Waiting for someone? Oh, you frightened the daylights out of me. Oh, I'm sorry, but you parked in my driveway, and I'm curious, that's all. Are you so curious that you have to sneak up on people? Well, I didn't sneak up on you. I just want to know why you parked in my driveway. Listen, mister, if you were me, you'd be parking your driveway, too. It's all the fault of those transmission people. Just like everything else these days, all they want is your money, and they don't care whether they give you anything for it or not. Yes, but, uh... Just last week, seven days ago, we had a new transmission put in this car, and we paid a pretty price for it, too. And suddenly, coming down the street, it starts to sound like Vesuvius on the rampage. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have any trouble with your transmission? If you did, you can sympathize with us. Us? With my husband and me. When we heard that noise, he said, now we'll just pull right over there to that curb. And I will go phone that company and tell them to come and get this car and fix it and fix it right. And they're going to, too. And if they don't, we'll sue. And we will sue. Did you say I was parking your driveway? Yes. You are. Oh, well, then maybe you'll let me use your telephone. If I call that company, I'll give them a piece of my mind, and I'll find out where my husband is, and where they had to take a cab or go to a phone booth, or where they uh, had to walk. Yes, or what... madam. Come on and use the phone. You're terribly nice to do You're this. Perfectly well. I'm telling you, we have had more trouble with that car. It's absolutely impossible to get in. They just will not do a thing about it. They're just awful. Someone saw you and Kurt Barron at the scene of the crime the night that Gansey was murdered. Barron swears you were both at a hotel in Framingham. And the employees of the hotel back him up. But that wouldn't have been hard to arrange. You could easily have slipped into town, taken care of Gansey, set it up, to put the blame on Jimmy, and been back in your honeymoon cottage well before morning. My husband has been accused of many crimes, but he's never been behind bars for a full 24 hours. Now, does that mean anything to you? It means... The police never had a really good witness against him before. They may have one now. 
terribly nice of you to let me use your phone. You know, my husband's gone for hours. That's I don't know where all right. There it is. Help Thank yourself. Thank you. You know, my mother used to have an electric room, and I swear it never gave us half as much trouble as this transmission. It's just horrible. I do hope he's there. Hello, I'd like to speak to Mr. Weston, please. It's very important. I hope he's there. They're ringing. Weston. Hello, Mr. Weston. This is Mrs. Casey. Mrs. Casey. And my husband is on his way over to your shop or to call you. And what he has to say won't be very pleasant. Is he there yet? The only Casey I know doesn't have a husband. You're so right. Well, we're in trouble again in front of the... Uh, what's this address? 224 East Boulevard. 224 East Boulevard. And all I can say is that you better get over here just as soon as ever you can. And if you don't make that transmission good, we're going to stop payment on that check. And if we can't do that, we're going to sue. There, I guess I told him. Thank you very much, Sonny. They'll be over in a few minutes. You're quite welcome. Janet? Where are you, honey? Out here, dear, by the pool. That's Kurt. If I tell him what you're trying to do, you won't live ten seconds. Well, that's the decision you're going to have to make. So you've got company. Yes, we've got company. Kurt. Yes? This is Mr. Maris. He's a lawyer. So? He's a lawyer for Jimmy Dennis. So? He's looking for a... What is it you're looking for? Character witnesses. I uh, suppose you read in the papers that uh, Jimmy Dennis is under arrest, charged with murder. I read the papers. The case against him is so complete that I've advised him to plead self-defense. With some good character witnesses, I'm sure that I can probably get him off with a, a life sentence. Well, count me out. We've let him take what's coming to him. But look now, uh, excuse this. me, uh, is that your car outside that went parked in my driveway? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get it moved right away. Hold it, mister. You get over there and sit down. Is this the way you treat all your visitors? You just get over there and sit down. I want to know what's going on. There's a woman outside in the car. I said her husband was going to look for a telephone. Kurt, put away that gun. I, mean, I want to know who this guy really is and what he's doing here. We haven't told you anything but the truth. I'm Dennis's attorney, and I'm trying to save him from the death penalty. Maybe by pinning it on somebody else, is that it? That idea. Do you have anybody in mind? Let me hear some words from you, mister. Real quick. I said real quick. Darren! Drop the gun! I said drop the gun! Okay, Counselor, what gives? Baron is guilty of the murder of Napoleon Gonzi, and I have an eyewitness of the killing. Who's the witness? This young lady. And I'm sure she'll make it easier for herself by making a statement. She can't testify. She's my wife. She isn't your wife. She isn't divorced from her first husband, a Mr. Ethan Collins. Is that true, baby? Mrs. Collins just made a vital decision on the side of law and order. I think she'll stay with it and testify against Mr. Barron. Just uh, goes to show you can't trust anybody, can you? Let's go. Huh? Thank you, sir. Oh, good day, Mrs. Casey. Mrs. Casey, what's the matter with him? I don't know. How did he get here? Oh, you know the lieutenant. He always uses his ingenuity. Whose ingenuity? Uh -huh.